What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. Extremely excited about today's guest, Morgan Steckler, who is the CEO at I Trust Capital, which is one of the few regulated cryptocurrency retirement companies. So Morgan has over 17 years of experience in the IRA space. So hey, Morgan, thanks for coming on the show today. Super excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'd love to talk about cryptocurrencies and IRA. It almost feel like two completely different worlds and you found a way to bring them together. So cryptocurrency is such a volatile market. I feel like IRA is like the complete opposite of that. How did you come up with the idea and what are so your, your goals in the next few years? Uh, that's a good question. So as you said, yeah, I've been in retirement account expertise for 17 years. I've worked in precious metals, Forex, and I was actually working in, uh, with, through a Robert Kiyosaki Rich Dad advisory company for precious metals. Um, I was running their sales direction and had about 10,000 clients in 96 countries. And in 2012, I got introduced to Bitcoin by clients who were miners. And I had no idea about what what crypto was, uh, but I started learning about this new form of money and, you know, Bitcoin met all of those requirements, you know, fungible, exchangeable, transferable, transportable and a store of value in and of itself. And I really got interested in it um, so much so that I left and I joined another firm soon thereafter and I helped put the legal framework together and was co-founder of the very first company in the space um, that was legally compliant to put cryptos into an IRA was a company called Bitcoin IRA. I was there for about a year and a half, um, and then I left and started the second company in the space, Coin IRA, where I kind of perfected the model a little more. Um, Both those models, I think, were a little more archaic. Uh, Nothing wrong with them, but I think they were more centric towards uh, the managing partners and people making money, not helping people. Um, You know, they have very high fees both on the custodial and on, on the margin, you know, where they, you know, there's charges of 10, maybe 15% off the top. Oh, wow. It didn't allow, yeah, for what I really wanted it to do. So what I did was last year, Q1, we launched I Trust Capital. And what we are building here is a 24-7 training platform for alternative digital assets in the IRA. Now, it will include products like cryptocurrency, of course, gold and real estate. And now, our platform, which is fully transparent, and after a small onboarding fee, all trades are at 1% in and out no matter what, 24-7. But the platform solves a num- number of major problems that are in the niche of alternative assets within the retirement account space. And the major problems that I saw over the years were the difficulty of setup, the high costs, as I kind of mentioned, liquidity problems, and legality issues. And What we're building, obviously, and what we're about to launch is a product in response to a major pent-up demand. And going into crypto, of course, for instance, um, when you break down the $27 trillion U.S. retirement account arena, uh, we identified that there's about $1 trillion held by individuals in older IRAs and 401ks who are currently trading crypto uh, at this time within the United States. So they are holding about a trillion dollars, but They don't have any knowledge of IRAs um, or even have one in some cases, but they can be doing this in such a better way where if you're doing this on the cash side, you have to worry about major things like wallets, you know, uh, what hard wallet am I holding or if I'm going to keep it in exchange, how to use an exchange, hacking and SIM port. But the most important one is taxes. And I know everyone doesn't like to talk about it, but at the end of the day, if you're trading in and out, you know, even if you buy on Coinbase, and Bitcoin to move to a Binance to buy some altcoin, you're doing three transactions. That's buy, sell, buy. And you're going to be in a realm called short-term capital gain. And whether you've 
are up or down, it could potentially change your tax bracket, you know, with the amount that you earn, and you're going to have to pay taxes. And you might not want to today or tomorrow, but they will find you and they will pay, you will have to pay taxes. If you're doing this within an IRA, there are no taxation events. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about hacking. You don't have to worry about exchanges. So we are giving people the best possible solution for what they're already doing. And you get to keep the money. That's, that's what this is about. So can you remind us why there's no taxation on IRAs? Within an IRA, when you're under the IRA arena, you're allowed to do movements, sort of like you're selling stocks, you're selling equities. Within an IRA, when you're buying and selling cryptos, you're doing it within a protected um, arena within, your, within the IRA. So there are no events that take place in, in the way that happens on the cash side. So you are free to trade as much as you want because you're not pulling that liquidity out, that fiat out. You're keeping it within that umbrella protected arena. So hence, there's no taxation. Got it. And you know, you bring such a valid point as well. I mean, first of all, like the fees that are accrued on Coinbase, especially when you're doing different transactions. And so yeah. you're adding another layer by taxes. And I have a lot of friends of mine who did a lot of altcoin trading like back in 2017 and had to pay a tremendous amount of fees. Because I mean, I think, you know, there was a lot of sort of gray area as to what is taxable and a lot of individuals didn't understand that they also, even though they probably had still their funds like inside the exchange, you still have to pay on what, uh, on the profit that you've made apparently. And I didn't know that. So, um, and, and, you, and, you, and you didn't keep track of it. That's yeah. the worst part because, you know, a lot of people are trying to do stuff about now, but if you're an active trader, you have to keep track of not only where you bought the original coin, where you sold it in the other position and then bought another one. So you have to keep track of so many different arenas and approximation doesn't, it doesn't count. You know, whether you're up or down, you have to pay taxes. And if you're in certain states in America, like we are here in California, you know, that could be up to 50% taxation rate. That is, that that's horrible in my opinion. So. You can do this and you can continue to learn, you can continue to trade the way you are, but you don't now don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And you know, that's why we're going for a volume play. We want to help as many people as possible and we're just trying to do it with 1% trades 24-7. It's never really been set up this way. And that's what I always envisioned, you know, utilizing blockchain. That's what it's for. So what are options right now when it comes to your IRA investment? Like what what's currently in the market? You mentioned the market. Let's see the first, you know, that first company I started with. They they have about five or six different cryptos on their platform. But if you want to do it, you're welcome to. I mean, they just have very high fees. You know, both through the custo the custodial side, where they charge a monthly, I think, basis point fee. They also charge a few hundred dollars, I think, for the IRA itself. Then, if you're buying, it could be ten or fifteen percent. Then, when you sell it's a 5%, and then if you want to rebuy, it's 5%. You're giving away your profits to do it within your IRA. Um, you can always go through a GBTC, but that's more of an ETF. That's, that's a whole different conversation. But with the ones that we're going to be starting with on our launch, we're dealing with, uh, we're very strict in, in what we are choosing. You know, We don't want to put um, new projects on there. Ones that have been proven, think of the top market cap, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Zcash, projects like that, you know, top 10, if you will. Uh, these are projects that have proven themselves are not going away today or tomorrow. So one could trade in now whenever they want, and it's just a 1% based upon whatever the aggregate price is at that very second, and that price could be locked in, and you're all set. So how are you able to have such competitive rates compared to everyone else in the market? Um, we're, it's just the model that we're doing. Uh, a lot of the partners of the previous companies, you know, they came from more of uh, precious metals, if you will, and the precious metals arena is a little more greedy, and they run on a kind of a boiler room model where you have a lot of commission sales reps, and they try to, you know, mark up as much as they can because that's their paycheck. Uh, it was not. Comfortable with. We here at iTrust, there are no sales reps. Everything we're trying to do is where you're in control, 
you're the one having access, you can log in, and we're here to help you if you want to do manual transactions, but we're going for a volume play. We want to help as many people as possible, and we're going for as much money under management, and we want to you know, take over the industry and help give a better name to crypto in general by doing this the right way. You know, We've already had to deal with Mt. Gox and Silk Road and this 20,000. It's We're trying to get past all of these bad connotations because blockchain is changing our world, it's here to stay, and we want people to be a part of it and not to be afraid of even dipping their toe in the water if they haven't. And if they are, to do it better so you don't have to give all of your profits away if you made profits. Yeah, I mean, that's a big hurdle that we're still sort of experiencing, the fact that especially individuals of a certain age group don't feel comfortable investing mm -hmm. in cryptocurrencies, which leads to my next question as to what if worst case scenario, let's say Bitcoin no longer exists for whatever reason and Ethereum is the latest currency. I don't know, I'm just making this up. What would happen sure. to someone who's uh, invested in uh, with iTrust Capital on in Bitcoin and it, like how would the trans the transition take place, if you will? Well, your so your IRA stuff. We're kind of the we put together the moving pieces. We're modernizing these decade old archaic paper um, manual processes. So we have a partnership with an IRA trust custodian that's been around for 30 years. Your IRA would be held there. We're just connecting the dots, so it's held compliantly. We also have a partnership, which we haven't made public yet, which will come out very soon with one of the top wallet providers in the world. So it's institutional grade storage, both hot cold, that is connected directly via the banking in two-way transactions. So the fiat from the account can only move from the individual's account to the wallet address provided and from wallet address provided to the individual. So we've put together a major security that allows people to rest assured that, you know, we are staying compliant. Legality has been signed off. Uh, we've put a lot of time into that and you can trade in out whenever you want. So all you have to do is log in. Uh, we're starting with a desktop. We'll have a mobile probably, you know, late Q2, early Q3 and you just sign in and you press buy and sell whenever you want you don't need to talk to anyone and if you don't feel comfortable before you hear news oh bitcoin something might be happening with bitcoin then press sell and it will be automatically converted back into fiat and sit in the ira as a fiat position where you can then move it into a different crypto or you can move it into a gold uh product that we'll be um discussing very soon and, and you know our goal is to you know help people with um, digitize alternative assets. So it's going to increase to other arenas. I'd like to look at real estate, maybe Q3, Q4. So, you know, we're going to be expanding into more than just crypto. We want it to be a solution for utilizing blockchain in a retirement account. So, I mean, just to vulgarize this, like, would, it, would you say that when you're logging into the platform, is it kind of like logging in into an exchanger or it has like at least a usability of an exchanger, if you will? Uh, think of it as your the simplicity of Coinbase. So you're going to log in, you're going to see your profile, but right there you're going to see your account balance. Uh, if you transfer it more, it'll be grayed out until you know the amount, the further amount is there. But you'll have your balance, and then you'll have your list of different tabs. Here's your crypto. Here's what is offered. Here's the price. You press buy or sell. The information page comes up. And it will pop up and will show how much do you want to buy. You type it in. Firm, you're done. I mean, it's very simple. So you don't need to know the nuances of an exchange. I mean, some of them get very complex. You know, you look at, you know, you can put options or puts or call. Like, you don't have to deal with any of that. This is just straight buy and sell, nice and easy, whenever you want. So you know, it's the Coinbase uh, simplicity, but the advancements of, say, you know, a Binance or some of the more advancements on the back end, to which you know the front end will never, the user will never have to really see. So what, what about for sort of a lot of younger generations who might not have an IRA in place, who are freelancers or they're part of the gig economy, what are sort of the next steps they should consider in order to set that up for themselves? Because I absolutely agree with you, like that's something that a lot of us don't think about and yeah. we should put in place for the future. That's a great question. Obviously, our target is early 20s to later 40s. Um, a lot of people, especially who have knowledge of, of cryptos, 
don't even know about IRAs. So part of what we're trying to do is provide education. And we want people to know you live in the United States. You have access to one of the greatest gifts that you know have been bestowed upon us, and that's the retirement account arena. So we want to teach people that, yeah, if you're earning under a certain amount, you qualify for the best possible retirement vehicle called a Roth. And you can put in up to 5,500 every year uh, post-tax, and you put that money into the, onto the platform, you trade the way you're doing, and when it comes time for retirement or whenever you need to pull it out, there are certain uh, stipulations, maybe life change events that you can pull out, but all of that profit, when the time comes within a Roth, is tax-free. There's no capital gains. So that is 100% your money. So if you buy Bitcoin at 4,000, it goes to 24,000, then that's all your money. There's no taxes that will take place. Um, if people have worked at an earlier job and they're sitting and don't even remember, oh, I have this old 401k, you can roll that over and that would move into a traditional. That's already been used and taxes have been pulled out um, or taxes have been pulled out in the Roth this one, you will have to pay a little penalty, you know, when RMD time or required mandatory distribution takes place, but it's a very minimal amount and, you know, the growth is protected. And that's one of the benefits of utilizing retirement accounts in general. So our goal and what we're trying to do is spread the word and message that people need to be aware of what a retirement account is, that you can do this and you can do what you're doing once you understand that you have this gift and you can do it. 1% trades, and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff, the stuff that's preventing a lot of people from even coming in. So we want to help people who are very experienced and people who have no experience. You know, that's why we're trying to aim with the simplicity of a Coinbase. You know, it's that was one of the best out there. They're an 800 pound gorilla for a reason. Most definitely. So what are your hopes in the next few years? Like what are the next steps for iTrust Capital? Uh, that's a good question. Obviously, as we go long, uh, as we go live, you know, we are going to be bringing on a small number. We already have our wait list where we're going to be bringing in manually auditing all the transactions, debugging our system, making sure we can handle the volume that we're anticipating. Then we'll begin our big growth phase, you know, um, anticipating about a little over 6,000 clients by the end of the year and major growth in 2020 where we would like to get to 25 plus thousand clients. Um, our goal is to get as much money under management, you know, to help as many clients as we can and to become a name within this industry so we can continue to grow and, and give a better name to cryptocurrency in general. You know, I think the sky's the limit. Um, it's the third company I've started in the space and, you know, I think all roads have led to this to do it the right way. Um, it's taken a lot of time to work to do this and we're just excited to really change the mindsets of people because I think in the next few years all of us are going to be a lot well we're a little different but I think the every, the every man and woman is going to be a lot more aware of what blockchain is or Bitcoin not just these top level things I think we're still in the 1994 era where we're just learning about email you know before this smart text messaging before mobile commerce of Amazon so in a few years I think it's going to be such a part of our lives that you know, we will, people will be a lot more aware and, and have an easier time coming in. And we just want to teach people on retirement accounts. That's, that's the key. If you're doing this, do it the proper way. You don't have to give all of your money to the tax man. I mean, we already have to pay enough taxes. And, you know, I think that alone is the biggest, you know, difference maker we can do. You know, this money is for you. You're, you're the one building your portfolio and your financial wellness. Let us help you do it the right way. You bring so many valid points, one of them being the fact that I think the media has played a tremendous role in depicting such a dark picture of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. And it's almost now where, I mean, companies like Morgan Stanley, who uh, publicly said that they're going to move forward with a stable coin. There's even been articles as far as Facebook considering and implementing blockchain. I mean, I think they have a couple of blockchain developer and specialist within their team. So I think that things are pro are finally sort of switching over and, and partially the problem was that there were so many uh, ICOs and different companies like, you know, when we were going through the bull market who, uh, who took advantage of uh, these different opportunities. 
However, what I'm worried about is that individuals will pay attention kind of when it's too late, right? So I, got, I have two questions for you. Like first and foremost, and, and personally, like I, I personally don't know enough about IRA to be completely transparent. So, and, and, sure. and sort of what my options are. So before sort of even thinking about investing in crypto with IRA, like what are good places to do that research? And then the second part of that question is like, where can someone sort of decide which potential cryptocurrency they would be interested in investing in, like uh, if they were to use iTrust Capital? I think that those are both very good questions. I think it, one of the things we're trying to do is provide this education. So, you know, uh, obviously, thank you for having me on here. Um, I do want to spread the word more. And obviously, with the PR that we're going to be putting in, we want to teach people the basics of not about crypto, but we want to kind of do an equal education. We're partnering with some companies that provide education. We don't want to give financial advice. We're not going to be that day in that regard. But we want to teach people on what an IRA is, what the benefits are, you know, why you should be worried about it. And, you know, when someone is in their 20s or early 30s, the R word is a curse word, retirement. You know, that's yes. the last thing on their mind, <laughs> especially when you're working at the speed of blockchain. That's the furthest thing from your mind. Yeah. But so we kind of are trying to take away the R word and, and, and want to teach more of financial wellness. You know, we want to just move the blinders and turn on the light and let people know you can do exactly what you're doing and you don't have to worry about all of these other things, namely taxes, namely worry about hacking. How to use the exchange if I press the wrong buttons that you could do what you're doing and you could do it where it's your money. So that's the major thing we're trying to teach. Um, we're going to have a lot more information and we're going to have videos for my team and myself. We want to do a lot of education on IRAs in general and we want people to be aware of that and simultaneously with the education we want the projects we'll have on there. We want them to have the information so if they want to do it, they do it. If they don't want it, they don't have to. We want it to be on them uh, to trade. If they want to just buy and hold, that's fine. If they want to trade 20 times. You know what? Go ahead. You can do whatever you want. It's on you. We don't. It, I've just seen historically, especially if someone starts a new job, if someone's you know changed jobs, they let their IRA sit there, or they sign up and maybe they have to pay attention to their HR meeting um, and what they sign. They check a few boxes and they don't think about it again. You know, maybe in the year they get an email and they they miss it because they're gonna have lunch with a friend. They don't care. This is where we want people to take more of an active role in something that you already you know are doing and that's why it's as simple as just signing in and pressing buy and sell well and, and also money, yeah we'll teach you how and also it. i know that a lot of younger generation are cashing out their ra uh just because i mean we are in a lot more debt than our that than older generations so that's something that's also yeah. happening um yeah so i think you know you're absolutely right educating ourselves about the fact that while well, retirement, even though it seems like so far away, it's something that you need to take into consideration in the really early well, days. You know, I mean, you just made that good point there, too. I mean, if you think about it, you know, yeah, a lot of people are cashing out. There's all this debt that continues to happen. Yes. And if you think about it, even those people who have the debt and, you know, attacking that trillion dollars of quote low hanging fruit of people who are already trading, they might be in debt, but they're still trading. They're still using cash. So why not take 5,500 of that if you don't even have an IRA and put it into a vehicle and continue to trade what you're doing? At least you'll have a number of options. I'm going to increase it to maybe 10, maybe 12 uh, as this year goes on. I'm not going to have too many. I'm only going to have top market cap solutions. So if you want to trade your other stuff, you could do that on the cash side. But if you're going to hold a position in these top markets, uh, caps that have proven themselves, just move it to what you're doing and put it in this vehicle. You know, gosh forbid you start a business and you have to chapter seven it, or if you have to go file bankruptcy, you know, especially if you're a young entrepreneur, uh, an IRA is protected from chapter seven. So it is another vehicle that protects you. So you don't lose your money that you would on the cash side because that's not a part of any kind of bankruptcy. So it's another benefit of what an IRA is. These are protected vehicles that are bestowed upon us by being in the United States. Right. And that's such valid information that is not readily available. I mean, I think in general, like our school system does a horrible job as far as educating us about um, 
financial options. And I mean, as someone who did not study finance, I mean, my major was, or I, I've just been in the marketing world for so long. I'm very thankful yeah. that I, my, with my interest in crypto, because it's forced me to educate myself more about finance. So actually, it's Tony Robbins. I can come up with a name. But I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, I forgot which book it was. It might have been Money Master the Game, where he talks about compounding and com like, compounding on your savings, you know, so someone who throughout his years, like started when he was 20, just putting $50 every month, he's compounding yeah. interest versus someone who's not thinking long term. And I think a lot of us, our yeah. generation, we're not thinking long term at all. And we're sort of projecting into the future as far as like, well, you know, when I make X amount of money, like I'm just going all in. And in retrospect, I mean, even looking at myself, you know, I realized that those are some of the mistakes that I've made and, and we just need to do a better job as a community in the crypto space, not just sort of like selling the dream of like headed to the moon, but also making sound financial advice. Um, so I'm super excited about what you're doing. <laughs> and, and that's why and I trust capital people can always just go to, you know, I trust capital.com. They can sign up and they have questions they can contact us you know anyone who's watching you have the ability you know contact us you know i have uh, people here we're all happy to just chat if you don't want to do anything you don't have to but if you don't have, if you there's no the worst question is the one that you never ask so if you have these kind of questions this is you know our goal is to help you know we're we're kind of a mission of trans transparency and compliance we're doing this the right way. We're doing this for the good of the people. And that's why, you know, we're, we're doing a volume game and we want to help as many people as possible. You know, I know there are bigger institutions like Fidelity, they're coming out. They're coming out with more institutional type platforms that are going to help the monsters, the other big monsters. Uh, that's going to benefit us because we're targeting every man and woman, the small and mid-sized companies, FAs, family offices. Um, we are going to be able to white label this to other smaller institutions, you know, as this year goes on. But we want to help everybody and, you know, those big companies come out are going to benefit us because it's just going to bring more awareness. And, you know, we want iTrust to, to be that trusted name. So, you know, hence that name. Right. And I think, I mean, just to expand on that is the fact that a lot of individuals mistrust big financial organizations uh, yeah. when it comes to retirement or even banking. So. So I think that's why it's important to inform ourselves, like have the proper education so we know exactly uh, what we're dealing with. I mean, just with this conversation yeah. today, I learned so much. And then make or look into different options to see what has the best interest and the least amount of fees, et cetera. So then you can make your own decisions. Definitely. Exactly. Where can yeah. we find you on social media? Um, you can look up at iTrust, I'm Morgan Steckler, I'm, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me on Facebook, um, we have our iTrust on, on Twitter, that is always constantly updated, but you can just sign up with iTrust Capital, you can find me, um, I'm always happy to chat, so as long as I'm not on the phone with someone else or in a meeting, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here to help everybody, so that, that's, that's our mission. Very exciting, and I'm going to include as well all the links in the blog post, guys. So, uh, and I also just want to mention, uh, in case anybody would think so, like this is not a paid interview. Uh, you know, I just uh, wanted to learn, uh, generally wanted to learn about what Morgan is currently working on, uh, just because I think that's, it's a great viable solution for individuals out there. All right, Morgan, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today it's for uh, a great Thanks. interview. Thank you so much for having me and uh, looking forward to the next one. Uh, love what you do. So I appreciate it. Yay. All right. Bye, guys. And uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen to us on iTunes or Stitcher if you are into the podcast. Take care, guys. Bye.